الله أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله حمد كثيرا والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن اتبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما لمتنا وزدنا علما يا كريم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan rajim Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu stajibu lillahi wa li rasooli idha da'akum lima yuhikum wa alamu anna Allah ya'huulu bayna al-mardi al-qalbihi Allah says that all you who believe respond to Allah and His Messenger when they call you what gives you life Allah Akbar so I mean we have to understand what this means when they call you to what gives you life Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Rasulullah s.a.w. they call us to Tawheed they call us to Islam the Quran the Sunnah and these give us life without it we're just a body dead spiritually dead we might be physically alive but spiritually subhanallah we are dead so and know and Allah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes between a man and his heart Allahu Akbar between a man and his heart his desires, his wants. What does this mean? I mean, that when you feel that you want to commit a sin, you feel like it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to stop you. It's remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to stop you. Look at this, I mean, it's such a beautiful, even in Arabic, it's just amazing. But, and know that Allah will come between a man and his desires, his heart. Allahu Akbar. Brothers and sisters, actually we're following in the series I love Islam like and we're speaking about that beautiful word that we said that we put some meaning into not just lip service and that is love and today specifically about I love Jesus Isa and I want to start with a story that is just I think one of the most amazing stories about Isa alayhi salam and this is narrated in Ihya al Mudin by Imam Ghazali in a collection of ahadith about uh, Zuhd or basically being ascetic and as Isa alayhi salam was an ascetic and so was Yahya alayhi salam his cousin John the Baptist <laughs> and it's it's interesting because you know Christians when they look at Islam they're like they think it's like well it's it's like Jesus versus Muhammad, you know? And I always catch them on the wrong foot because they'll be like, so which one is it, Jesus or Muhammad? And I'm like, both. <laughs> and they're like, what? I'm like, they're on the same team actually. They're playing the sa on the same team. Guess what? It's on the team of Tawheed. It's like, you're the one who's making, you know? For us, it's, it's uh, Jesus and Muhammad. You know, there's no Jesus or Muhammad. It's Jesus and Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, and it's amazing that the view that Islam has on Isa Islam is so similar to what even the Bible portrays, but very different to what the Christians try to portray. It's a big difference. Like so. so this story goes, it's called the man of three loaves of bread. And some of you might have heard this story. But basically, Isa salam was accompanied by his companions and a man insisted to accompany them so they went together and Isa sent someone to get some bread and they got three loaves of bread so Isa salam, went away for a bit to the water and when he came they ate the two loaves of bread and there was one loaf of bread left with that man and the people so when he came back from the water the loaf of bread was gone so Isa asked Jesus, we're going to refer to Jesus, this is just for our 
for our followers and, and uh, people who are watching. So Jesus said to him, who ate the third loaf of bread? And the man said, I don't know. There was only two loaves of bread. He said, fine. They went on, and they reached to a crossing, to cross the water. So Isa salam, invoked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he asked Allah, and we know that Isa cannot do any miracle, except, or he said, I do the will of my father. Right? Yeah. So, he walked on the water, and we know very well this story, and so did the Sahabas with him. And they saw that as a miracle. So Isa salam, turns to the man and says, By the one who has made me walk on this water, what happened to the third loaf of bread? He said, there was only two loaves of bread. So Isa alayhi salam, Jesus said, okay. So they went on, till they reached, and they, there was two deer, and they caught one of the deers, and they slaughtered it, and ate it. And as they're sitting around, imagine, they're sitting around eating this, this animal, and Isa is saying, by Allah, the one and only, I command you to be resurrected. And in front of them, that deer came back, all the parts, everything started reassembling in front of them and coming back to life. So Isa Islam turns to this man and says, by the one who has given, taken the life and given the life this year, what happened to the third loaf of bread? So the man said, there's only two loaves of bread. Fine. They go on till they reach a desert area. There's some sand. Isa alayhi salam takes three piles of sand and says, invokes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Jesus is praying to Allah and Allah gives him this miracle that the sand, the three piles of sand turn into gold. So Isa alayhi salam says, one is for me, one is for you, that man, and the third one is for the one who ate the third loaf of bread. So immediately the man said, I ate the third loaf of bread. He's like, fine, then you can take all three. So he gave him all three. So the man sat down, pondering and thinking what he will do with his new wealth. A lot of money, a lot of gold. As he's doing that, Aisha says to him, you can have all three, but you'll not accompany us anymore. Why? Because he was a liar. And he was chasing dunya. <laughs> so, they left him with his new wealth, and he's thinking, oh, I'm going to do this and that. Oh, yeah. As he's doing that, three thieves pass by. They see him <laughs> with his wealth. What do you think they're going to do? They kill him. So now these guys have the money and they're like, whoa, we have some money now. All right. We're hungry. How about one of us goes, gets some food, some bread. So they, he does. As he's going, the other two guys are thinking, well, we have three pals and we're each just going to get one. But it would be better if we each get one and a half. So how about we kill this guy when he comes back? On his way back, the guy's thinking, well, one pile of gold is nice, but I can have all three. How about I kill these two? I'm gonna poison the food. So he gets some poison and poisons the food. As he arrives, the two jump on him, kill him, keep the money, but they eat the food. <laughs> and they die. So now you have four bodies lying on the floor, and the gold is there. On their way back to the, to, the, to the city or village, Isa and Sahabas pass by and they see the four people lying down and the pile of gold, three piles of gold, untouched. So he says to them, Hadi Hayat Dunya. This is the life of this world and this is what happens for those who chase it. This is the life of this world and this is what happened to those who chase it. They lied, they wanted the gold, 
they won the dunya, they'll do anything. They got in the end what everyone will get in the end. So really, brother and sister, I mean, the, the moral of the story is that, subhanAllah, this life is short. And we need to go back to those main basics. And Isa alayhi salam was one of those prophets. Jesus was one of those prophets who was teaching these things to remove. If you can't remove the dunya, this worldly life, this physical, from your pocket, at least remove it from the heart. I mean, it's a deep lesson. And Jesus, Spirit of Him, was teaching us this. And Jesus, Isa as we call him, is our prophet. And we love Jesus. I know a lot of Christians don't think that. A lot of Christians don't even know that we believe in Jesus. They get so, like, what? You believe in Jesus? My Jesus? Well, like, he's not your Jesus. Actually, it's not even his name. It's not even Jesus. You know, as one brother says that the Westerners, they, they jaywalked on Jesus. Everything, J, J, J. It's not Jesus. In Hebrew, it would be like Yeshua in Arabic, which is very close to Hebrew and Aramaic, or Isa, you know what I mean? So, you know what I mean? Yeah, there's, there's, you know, it's, it's not like that. So we need to understand, because when you say Jesus, you get this picture of this like, white dude, with like, like, like a skateboarder or something, like, or a surfer, you know what I mean? Like what, an American Californian boy. A'udhu Billah. You know what I mean? And it's not like that. And you find the media portraying him sometimes like that, right? He's like really nice, like, you know, uh, like hippie type of looking, you know? Right? And it's not like that. If you look at the descriptions of Isa Ali Salaam, I mean, it's very beautiful, you know, a darker complexion, long hair. And subhanAllah, we see the historical Jesus, a man. And this is what Islam, not necessarily they were saying that he was a man like everyone else. Actually, that's the point. He was not. He was not a man like everyone else. But he was a man. And unlike, for example, C.S. Lewis, and we all maybe know C.S. Lewis, as Christians like to brag about him, that, you know, if it wouldn't be for C.S. Lewis, you know, Christianity basically would be like, in today's world, in today's time, would be, you know, lacking or something. But he has a very interesting say, quote, and he says basically that, you know, Jesus was either like a liar, a lunatic, or he was like God, or who he claims, right? But it's interesting that a lot of people quote this, right? That the Christians always quote. Either he was God, or he was crazy, or he was a liar. He can't have anything else. But we would like to say to them that there's many other options, actually. Who says that he was crazy, or a liar, or God? It's not like that. If you actually analyze the Bible, and analyze the scriptures, we can find that there's many other options. And as Muslims, we take the option that he was a prophet of Allah. And for no reason other than the apparent proofs. The apparent proofs. Very simple, before we even go to scriptural, scriptural proofs, simple, rational points. Jesus was a man, he walked, he ate, and he had to go to the bathroom. Does God go to the bathroom? Now some Christians might say, yes. He has to experience everything that human beings experience. And you're just like, Lakum dinukum waliyadin. Okay, if you believe in a God that goes to the bathroom, go ahead. What we believe? Al Hayyul Qayyum. La ta'khuduhu sinatu wa la no. And he's the ever living, the all sustainer, no slumber. What's the, the ace is sleeping. He's getting tired. He's getting angry. He's cursing the fig tree. He doesn't know there's no fruit. What? God doesn't know there's no fruits on it? He doesn't know the season of the fruits? Are you kidding me? Now, we're not trying to make fun of people, but we need people, we pray to Allah that they understand that they open their minds to basic rationale. Basic. This is not even advanced things. Basic logic. Basic logic. You can't... Because when you say God, what does God mean? Do we just throw words out there? Of course people today have God, Mother, God, Father, God, Son, God, everything God, right? It's, it's a joke. 